Sedimentary basins are the bowl shape depressions on the surface of the earth where thick accumulation of sedimentation is taking place. So, sedimentation in a sedimentary basin is a continuous process and the sediments are being supplied from the adjoining upland areas. There are three types of sedimentary basins. Number one, sedimentary basins which are formed by Convergent plate movement. Then the sedimentary basins which are formed by divergent plate movement, and then the sedimentary basins which are formed by transform movement are side by side. So we have already discussed the sedimentary basins which are formed by divergent plate movement, and the sedimentary basins which are formed by convergent plate movement when one plate is subsided. But there are two situations in the Convergent plate movement. Number one, when one plate is oceanic, another plate is continental. The oceanic plate will subduct, that is the soft collision that is subducting. And there are a number of sedimentary basins which are formed known as trench, then the back arc basin, fore arc basin, the retro arc basin. Then the sedimentary basins which are formed by convergent plate movement when the plates are colliding and the sedimentary basins which are formed by transform movement we will discuss the two types of sedimentary basins today in this lecture so the sedimentary basins which are formed when two plates are moving towards each other and and they are under collision means their density is roughly equal that's why the one plate is not subducting and if the plate is not subducting in that situation the plate will collide why the plate will collide why the plate will not subduct because if two plates are moving towards each other the plate which is subducting is oceanic but after total conjunction of the oceanic plate the continental plate of the subducting plate will come in contact with the continental plate of the overriding plate because both the plates are continental their density is roughly equal so the plate which was initially subducting that will oppose the subduction because the density is low so that will oppose the subduction that will not subduct that will not sink and because of this collision the first sedimentary basins which are formed are known as Peripheral four line basins. Peripheral four line basins. So this peripheral four line basins, if this plate is going like this, and another plate is initially it was subducting but going like like this, this is moving with that, this is with that, and a, a mountain was formed here, and because of this. Mountain, we can say that it's like this is like this, and this is uh, like this. So the total, we can say that this part was uplifted in the form of this is these are the mountains. So this peripheral four line basics are formed on the on this plate. Because, because of the formation of the mountain, this plate which was initially subducting, if mountain is formed at this place, if this is the mountain, it will bend like this mountain. So if this is the subducting plate and the mountains are formed here, because of the increase in the weight of this mountain, this plate will bend like this. The bending of this plate, how much it will bend, that will depend on two things. Number one, the load of the Himalaya, the weight of the Himalaya. And second, 
the flexural rigidity of this plate if the flexural rigidity of this plate is very high the bending will be low and if the flexural rigidity of this plate is low that bending will be high then if the weight of the or load of the mountain is high the depression will be high and if the load or thrust or weight of the mountain is low the depression will be low it means how much will be the depth of that depression that will depend on two things number one weight of the mountain thrust loading of the mountain that will be directly proportional to the weight of the mountain if weight is high the depression will be high that will be also directly proportional to the flex uh, inversely proportional to the flexural rigidity if the flexural rigidity is high then the depression will be low and if the flexural rigidity is low the depression will be high it means the shape and size of this depression which are formed on the initially subducting plate that will depend on two things the weight of the mountain the thrust loading of the mountain and second the flexural rigidity of the plate so the peripheral four line basins are are like this if this is a this is a not like this but if this is a plate and this is a we can say mountain the, the depressions are the the depressions are the basin the depression this is a peripheral fold like this now the thickness our depth of this peripheral fold like basin will be high towards mountain and it will be the thickness or the depth depth of this basin will be low towards flat okay. so the peripheral four line basins are the one which are produced in front of the mountain in the plate because of thrust loading of the mountain and the flexural rigidity of the plate now the this is the mountain and this is the we can say that the craton or the subducting plate or the plate on which basin was formed so this basin is located between the plate and the mountain so this basin will receive the sediment from this plate as well as from the mountain most sediments will be derived from the mountainous region but this part will receive the sediments from the plate also the river they transport the weather details sediments from the mountainous region they transport the sediments and they deposit the sediments into this basin the deposition of the sediments by the river the sediments which are weathered by river transported by river and deposited by river into this basin those sediments are known as alluvium alluvium is the most fertile soil of our country indian council of agricultural research has classified eight type of soils in our country in which alluvium soil is the most fertile soil so the ganga basin is basically filled by the alluvium what are alluvium alluvium are the sediments which are weathered by the rivers from the mountain transported by the river and deposited into this peripheral four line basin after continuous deposition over long period of time this basin was converted into a flat region now it is in our country we are having very good example of this peripheral four line basin and because of the continuous sediments of the alluvium that basin was converted into a plain in our country we call that plain as ganga plain and the name of the basin which is peripheral four line basin the present day example in the world is ganga basin when this ganga 
basin was formed? The Ganga basin was formed during Middle Miocene period because we are getting the oldest sediment into the Sivalyaks which are supposed to be the uplifted part of this peripheral foreland basin. The oldest sediment in the Sivalyaks are Middle Miocene. That's why we can say that the peripheral foreland basins are the basins which are formed because of the thrust loading of the Himalaya in the in the adjoining plate a basin is formed the depth of that, that basin depends on the flexural rigidity of the plate and the thrust loading of the mountain for Ganga basin which is the example of this peripheral four line basin and the Ganga plain which was the basin was converted into plate because of the filling of the sediments the Ganga basin we can say that Ganga basin is the most important example of the peripheral foreland basin and the Ganga basin was formed during middle Malocene period because of the thrust loading of the Himalaya in the Indian plain just in front of the Himalaya a depression was formed, a basin was formed, a slag was formed, a fold deep was formed, a syncline was formed, a graven was formed and that graven, that depression is known as Ganga basin. The the Ganga Basin was filled by the sediments of the Himalaya as well as from the Platonic part. They filled the basin and converted this basin to the Ganga Plain. Ganga Plain is one of the biggest alluvial tract of the world. This is most densely populated region of the world. Why this is most densely populated region of the world? Because of its suitability of the climate because of its smooth landscape, because of the highly fertile soil, because of the availability of the water, this Ganga Basin is the most densely populated region of the world. And the thickness of the alluvium, alluvium are the sediments of the Ganga Basin. So the thickness of the alluvium is, is towards, more towards Himalaya, around 3 to 5 kilometers. And the thickness of the alluvium is, is less towards peninsula part towards, towards South India that is around 200 to 300. Is it clear to all of you? Now the second basin, four deep is the deepest part of the four line. The deepest part of the four line basin is known as four D. Yeah, four D D W D. Now the second type of sedimentary basins which are formed because of the collision are known as Pity Valley Basin. This is the, we can say that the peripheral four line basin and the data thrust. We all know that in the Himalaya there are so many thrusts, the main center thrusts, the main boundary thrusts, these are the thrusts. So they, the thrust, they basically transport the segment from one place to another place. So if we are getting the inclusion of other type of segments into a particular region, that may be because of this thrust seat, that may be because of this faults, low angle reverse faults are known as thrust. So in the Himalaya we are having thrust. So this is the peripheral four line basin. And in this peripheral four line basin, because the formation of thrust is a continuous process. Tectonic, Himalaya is still tectonically very active. So if one thrust forms here, if this is the thrust. Means if the peripheral four line basin are divided into two because of the formation of a new thrust. So 
one part of the peripheral pore line basin is this, and another part of the peripheral pore line basin is this. So you can see that the one part of the peripheral pore line basin they appear to climb on this thrust. They are climbing on. They appear to climb on this thrust like a pig, piggy bank. That's why this term was. Given by Uri and Frank, Uri and Frank in 1984, they coined this term the piggyback because one part of the four line basin that appears to climb on the thrust. So it said that this is the piggyback, and that's why this basin, which appears to climb on the back of one thrust is known as piggy bandages. Dune Valley is the present example of the piggy bandages in Dune Valley. Because you all know that Dune Valley, very close to the Dune Valley, near Mohan, we are having great bounding thrust. Sorry, Himalayan frontal thrust (HFT). Himalayan frontal thrust that separates the Shivalyas from the Ganga plain. Yes. So this HFT, which separates the Shivalyas from the Ganga plain, it also separates, or it is separated from the Dun Valley also. So the Dun Valley that appears to climb on this thrust is known as Peaky Bank. So this is second type of sedimentary basin, piggyback basin, which is formed because of the plates when both the plates are coming towards each other and they are colliding. Then the third type of sedimentary basins when the plates are moving side by side to each other. That is the strike slip movement. Number one is transtensional movement, then transpressional movement, then third transrotational movement. Rotational movement means if there are two blocks and the one block is completely rotating, then the sedimentary basins which are formed because of the rotation of the block are known as trans-rotational sedimentary basins. Basins are formed when the plates are under compressional movement means both the plates they are moving towards each other even the plates are moving side by side to each other. Then transpressional, when the plates are moving side by side to each other and if there is overlapping, in that situation what happens? If this is one block and this is another block, then here, because of the, this is the we can say that this is the part which is overlapping. This plate is moving in this direction and this plate is moving in this direction. So this wrong shape basin is known as transtensional basin. Because both the plates they are moving side by side to each other and in the overlapping part a wrong shape basin is formed. This wrong shape basin is known as transtensional basin. This is also known as Pull apart. The present example of this pull apart basin is the Dead Sea. In the Dead Sea, the sediments, the Jordan River, very famous river of Israel, the Jordan River transport the sediment and deposit the sediment into the Dead Sea. The sediments are deposited by Eolian process. The sediments are deposited by 
fluid process and the second side was the by dead time process so these three are very important process in the depths so this is very most important sedimentary basin which are formed by stratigraphic movement or the translational movement they are also known as pull apart basin which is round in shape and which are formed at the overlapping part of the two plates the present example is the dead sea we all know that dead sea is very famous because of its high salinity the salinity of the dead sea is very very high then the third type of sedimentary basins are the hybrid sedimentary basins or the miscellaneous sedimentary basins such as barred basin such as inverted basin such as remnant basin barred basin inverted basin remnant basin barred basins are like this This is the sea. Here there is a barrier, and this is the basin which was initially connected to this sea. This basin was initially connected to the sea, but because of this formation of this, that may be barrier reef. So because of this formation, it was temporarily disconnected from the sea. If this basin is temporarily disconnected from the sea. Here we will get the evaporite products. Here we will get the alloy. Here we will get the gypsum. And if the water of the sea is temporarily coming for 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 some time into this basin, ah, uh, here we will get the the deposition of the. limestone here also we will get the deposition of limestone so this is the barred basin which is known as bull side because on both side of this halite and gypsum deposit we are getting the limestone like i so this is barred basin of bull side this is the this basin is inter Within barred basin. In some case, if this basin is disconnected, not intermittently, but that it disconnected permanently, here we will get these evaporite deposits. That is known as barred basin of tier drop type. So the barred basin are of two type: bull side and the tier drop. Tier drop. so the intermittent if the barred basin is intermittently connected with the sea we will get bull side barred basin and if the intermittent basin if the barred basin is disconnected permanently from the from the sea then that is known as barred basin of tier drop type tier drop t e a r tier drop in both we will get the deposition of halite and the gypsum or evaporite and the gypsum and in the intermittent we will get the limestone here then the inverted basin we all know that the basins are the locus of deposition and the stress is maximum if under compressional regime the stress is maximum in the center and because of this compressional regime if that basin which was initially the locus of deposition that becomes the locus or focus or center of weathering 
then that becomes then that basin is known as inverted basin so the basin which is because of the change in the tectonic regime becomes the center of weathering we all know that the basins are characterized by the locus of deposition but in the inverted basin deposition is not taking place what is taking place erosion is taking place because of the change in the tectonic regime because the stress is maximum at the center then that basin is known as inverted basin then remnant basins is because of the closer because of the destruction in the plates oceanic or continental if two plates are coming towards each other the crust is continuously decreasing and the sedimentary basin will also close so we all know that the northern part of the india was characterized by tpc because of the continuous convergent movement of the eurasian plate and the indian plate that tpc that close that is a here that extinct and the remnant part of the tpc known as bia bangal is the present day example of remnant basin so these are the hybrid type of miscellaneous sedimentary basins the bar basins the inverted basins and the remnant basin this is all about the sedimentary basins which are formed by various tectonic regime thank you and good wishes to all if there is any query or any question you are most welcome